So I have been painting Warhammer miniatures for nearly a decade now and I don't really include the time that I was working out like what paints were or which way up a brush went. I mean that I've spent nearly 10 years trying to make my miniatures look really, really good. Now, since I've painted consistently nearly every single week of my life for the last 10 years, as you can imagine, I have painted quite a lot of miniatures. And I kind of realized recently that if you've just started following me here on YouTube or on any of my other social medias, you may not be aware of that because a lot of my best miniatures have kind of been buried by eight years of work in progresses, doodles, dog pictures, and terrible Warhammer memes. So I wanted to make this video where I show you guys what I think are some of the best miniatures that I have ever painted and I want to make this video for a few reasons. First of all, I think it'll just be a really nice comfy video. So make sure you settle in with a nice hot drink before we start. But mostly, I just wanted to make this video to introduce you, my lovely new YouTube audience, to my painting style and to introduce you to some miniatures which I personally am really, really proud of. But also for me, I kind of want to work out what is the best miniature that I have ever painted. Let's find out. Whoosh. So this list is going to be in a very rough order, starting from miniatures that I've painted, which I think are pretty good, and ending in what I think are the pinnacle of my career and the best miniatures I've ever painted. But let me know in the comments section which ones are your favourites, or which ones you would have ranked higher in the list, or even possibly lower. I'm genuinely really interested to see what you guys think of all my miniatures, and I'm a little nervous because I'm kind of putting myself out there, and I've never really collected what I consider to be all of my best work and then shown it off in one place. So, so do let me know. Thank you. <laughs> and also there is going to be a very special announcement at the end of the video. So make sure you stick around for that. So without further ado, we are going to start with a personal favourite of mine and one that you may have seen before. It's Synthwave Grendel Grendelson. I painted this Necromunda squat miniature after I had a bit of a breakdown after trying and failing to paint a Grimdark Raven Guard Space Marine miniature in 2019. And at the time, Synthwave and Neon Retro Futurism was kind of all of the rage. So I painted up the brightest and most obnoxious miniature I could, which is this this guy and he was so fun to do. As with a lot of my paint jobs, I'm genuinely really surprised that this miniature ended up looking in any way cohesive given how many colours I used and the fact that I decided that the base needed a hand sculpted lawn flamingo for some reason. But people seemed to really dig this miniature when I showed pictures of him online. I've seen fan art inspired by him and he's even gone on to win a few awards like a finalist pin at Golden Demon and a silver in the Bring Out Your Lead painting competition and to this day he is still one of my favourite miniatures I've ever painted. When Scaith's Wild Hunt was released for Underworlds in 2019, I was asked if I'd like to paint up one of the warbands for a Warhammer article. And whilst I wasn't overly inspired by the miniatures because they're not even goblins, I do like a challenge, so I agreed. And to my surprise, the whole thing ended up being one of what I think is the best units that I've ever done. And in particular, I really like this Lady Kurnothy that I painted because I think the choice in colours I used are super, super nice. The purpley browns with the greens and that little bit of almost purple grey came together really nicely. Sometimes I can struggle with more limited or different colour schemes than what I'm used to, but I'm really proud of the one I came up with for these minis. And I also think the faces I painted were really pretty too. Another miniature that if you follow me or you've watched any of my videos you will definitely have seen is of course the sassy Nurgling. For some reason this little guy has kind of become intrinsically tied to me as sort of a reflection of myself in my videos and on my discord and just about everywhere else. And yeah, maybe he's on this list just because I like the miniature, but I really do like the paint job I did on him as well. The saturated orange to pinky purple skin, the lurid helmet, all 
all those things make me really happy. And I even put him on a little plinth and I entered him into a Games Workshop painting competition and he got silver. So good for him. This list is going to be mostly Warhammer, but I quickly want to talk about one of my favorite non-Warhammer miniatures that I've painted, which is this fiery from the movie Labyrinth. He was one of the very first non-Games Workshop miniatures I painted after I left the company, and I was so happy and inspired to be painting a miniature from my favorite movie, and I think that that's reflected in the paint job that I did. I tried to keep it as accurate to the movie as I could, down to the little tuft placement and the markings around the eyes, and doing this was super good fun. After I posted the miniature online and the painting tutorial for him on my Patreon, Johnny Fraser Allen, who sculpted the miniature, reached out and asked if I'd be interested in receiving the three ups of the miniature itself. And then he very kindly and generously sent me a whole care box of incredible large scale Jim Henson miniatures. And I am so insanely excited to one day get round to painting the larger scale versions of all the little miniatures that I love. So thank you, Johnny Fraser Allen, for sending those my way and thank you David Bowie just thank you thank you David <laughs> Something that you may not know, because I don't think a lot of people know this about me, is that I absolutely love Blood Bowl. In fact, I have two full goblin Blood Bowl teams with extra players, trolls, cheerleaders, wraths, apothecaries, the whole works, and I even have a massive Blood Bowl stadium display board as well. So, as you can imagine, it's quite hard for me to pick just one as being the best out of all of them. But one that does stand out to me, because of all the effort I put into doing all all the scales and the details and the free handing is this troll which I have aptly named do not feed the troll because I thought that was funny I'm sorry <laughs> And whilst we're on the topic of Blood Bowl miniatures, I just kind of want to mention one of my favourite miniatures I've ever painted, which isn't part of either of my Blood Bowl goblin teams, and that is my beautiful Ogre Lady miniature. And I wish that I had a nice 360 of her for you to see here, but unfortunately, but also not unfortunately, she is currently in the first ever display of fantasy miniatures in an art gallery, which I think is pretty cool, so we'll forgive her for not being here today. Oh yeah, and also, if you're interested, both of these Blood Bowl miniatures have happily won finalist pins at Golden Demon 2, so double yay for them. Now we're going to start looking at some of my favourite miniatures I have ever done as we go further up the list. And this one I don't even think we can call a miniature because he almost didn't fit in my light box. It is my McFarlane scale Rainbow Warrior Space Marine. I've painted two of these guys now and I've discovered that I absolutely love painting Space Marines at this scale. I get to be a little bit more messy and loose with things like weathering and shading, but also at the same time I get to be way more detailed in the places where it really matters, like the face and on the free handing and the weapons, and I think that all of that comes together in just the best way on these miniatures. Of course I had to make this guy a rainbow warrior so I could go hard on all those rogue trader free handing details, and I just love how grim dark he looks compared to the rest of my rainbow warrior collection. But maybe surprisingly, he isn't my favourite Rainbow Warrior miniature that I've ever painted. He is the biggest by far, but my favourite is actually the smallest by far, and is this little epic scale Rainbow Warrior here. He is smaller than my pinky nail, and I spent way too much time on him and all the rainbow details on his armour, and I even managed to dot the pupils on his impossibly small eyes. I adore miniatures which really give me a bit of a painting challenge, and this guy here was definitely one of those. Now for the second non-games workshop miniature on this list, it is my very own Rascal Town Fishing Goblin. I mentioned this in the video where I talked through his creation, but I think it absolutely makes perfect sense that this would be one of the best paint jobs I've ever done, because I kind of designed him because I like the way he looks. Or maybe it's really good because all the details are really big and clear, but painting him up was an absolute delight, and I was so, so happy with the results. 
It's been such a pleasure and a cool experience to be able to release this miniature in the wild world and see other people painting him up and enjoying painting him as much as I did. It's so cool to be able to see all the different takes that people have on the miniature and I honestly couldn't be more proud. So a huge thank you to everyone who has picked up the miniature and painted it. It really means the world to me. Thank you so much. Speaking of goblins, I think it's time that I show you what I think is one of the best goblin miniatures ever sculpted by Games Workshop and one of my favourite miniatures that I have ever painted. It is, of course, the Fungoid Cave Shaman. I painted up this miniature when I was very, very ill and signed off work and I honestly barely remember the process at all. I think my brain just kind of turned off and went into colour autopilot and I produced this. Again, as with a lot of the work on this list, I think it really helps that I just absolutely adore the miniature. This guy and the Gobapalooza goblins are some of my favourite goblin miniatures ever made. So, of course, I spent hours laboriously blending and highlighting every single little mushroom on this miniature because that's what it deserves for being so damn cool. Also, as like a little easter egg, when I painted up the Studio Colossal Squig for the Forge World website, I made the little spore looking things on the Colossal Squig look like the Spore Squig from the Fungoid Cave Shaman miniature, as kind of like a little hint as to like, oh maybe that's where the Spore Squigs come from, they come out the bigger squig, because I just like Warhammer easter eggs and I wanted to make one myself. Now we are heading into the top three miniatures that I have ever painted. And in third place, we have another little challenge that I set myself, which is this old school pink horror here. And if he looks a little bit strange to you right now, then that's because this isn't actually how I painted him. This is. That's right, I painted this whole miniature in inverted colours. Because what's more zinchy than a paint job which doesn't even exist in this plane of reality? This miniature was honestly a nightmare to paint and I was constantly having to like invert my work in progress pictures to check if the effect was working, but when it was done it was actually very very cool and it's definitely one of the most challenging and cool things that I think I have ever painted. In second place is what I consider I think to be the most technically well painted miniature that I have ever done. And it was kind of hard not to put this in first place because it's technically better painted and unfortunately I do think I like plateaued and hit the peak of my career when I painted this but whatever. In second place we have my converted Zinch Mind Stealer Spyranx. This is another miniature which I painted for a Warhammer community article in which we were all given the same figure to paint. And when I looked at the miniature I was like, yeah I want to give that boy wings and a tiny little owl for his base. I wanted to make him a zinchy looking sphinx like demon, but I wanted the colour scheme to look like the Spyranx was like constructed from glowing bright crystals. And that was pretty ambitious, but I think it paid off and this is definitely one of if not the best miniature that I have ever painted. I'm now going to show you what I consider to be the best miniature that I have ever done. And I'm curious to see if people who have been following my work for a while can guess what it is. So if you think you know, pause the video, write it in the comments section and see if you guess correctly. Because I think that the best miniature that I have ever painted is my converted Zinch Lord of Change. This miniature for me is one of my proudest and biggest achievements and I spent so long planning the elaborate conversion and collecting all of the different kits I would need to pull it off. This miniature is compiled of a Necrosphinx, a Flame Spire Phoenix, a Zinch Chariot Kit, a Tree Lord and a lot of Skaven Tails which actually do make excellent tentacles if you're wondering. Whilst I think that the paint jobs I did on the Mind Stealer and a lot of the other miniatures on this list are technically much better and despite the fact that this miniature is also the oldest miniature on the list, I think that due to his impressive pose, wild conversion and zany paint scheme, he really takes the cake. 
Also, if you want to go see any of the last three miniatures that I mentioned on this list in real life, then they are currently, as of this video, being posted on display at Warhammer World. And I really like it when people go to Warhammer World and take pictures of my miniatures and say that they visited them. So make sure if you want to see them, you do whilst you still can. So that's it. Those, I think, are the best miniatures that I've ever painted. And like I said, I think it's quite funny that the oldest miniature, the one that I painted the longest time ago, is the one that I think is the best. Because that's a little bit scary for me, because I'm terrified of the idea of plateauing, which essentially means that I think my best work is behind me, and I'm not currently improving my skill as I go along. And that lingering fear of just never getting any better at what I do is one of the reasons why with every miniature I paint I try to push myself to get better and better and maybe try new techniques that I'm a little scared of that I've never tried before. Which brings me on to just one more miniature and it's the miniature which I have painted most recently and even though it's quite different to the other miniatures on this list I genuinely do think it may be one of the best things I have ever painted. But I wanted to save him for last because because he's very special, no one's ever seen him before, and he may end up being the best miniature you've ever painted too. I am extremely excited to announce that there is a brand new gribbly little goblin coming soon to Rascal Town. His name is Grampus, and he is a wacky little festive Christmas goblin, which I just designed and painted up a couple of days ago for the holiday season, and every other season too, because he's cute and perfect, and I love him so much. He's huge huge and fluffy and was honestly just a delight to paint. And he can also be turned into a Christmas tree ornament too if you so wish. Just like the fishing goblin, we are making this miniature available for you to buy and put under or on your tree via my website roguehobbies.com. And pre-orders are going to be open from when this video goes live, so right now. So make sure you get one quick if you want him to be delivered by the big day. And with that big announcement, I want to thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and as always, thank you for being rogues. I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Bye bye bye!